Puka Nakua is coming off one of the best rookie seasons we have ever seen. Not only that, I am in the painful position where I believe I only have him in one dynasty league. So I am forced to sit here and admit I did not draft him in a redraft. I was completely wrong before the season started. And now am I going out there and am I buying the rookie wide receiver who just broke NFL records? Not only was this man dominant in the regular season where he goes out and has 105 receptions, 160 targets, averages 87 and a half receiving yards per game, playing alongside former triple crown winner Cooper Cup and Cooper Cup only at about 61 and a half receiving yards per game. Now, yes, you can make an argument. Well, Mason early in the season, Cooper Cup was hurt, blah, blah, blah. Cup was supposed to be fine for the offseason. I mean, he was supposed to be fine for this game against the Detroit Lions. And you know what happened? Puganukua, 181 receiving yards, gets you the receiving touchdown off of 10 targets. Cooper Cup, yeah, has nine targets. Yeah, they look at him in the red zone. Cooper Cup has 27 receiving yards in comparison. Puganukua is now officially the wide receiver one for the Los Angeles Rams. He has supplanted one of the former best and most talented wide receivers in the NFL. Now he is sliding into that role as an alpha, which has previously led to a number one overall season in fantasy. Now, one thing that I want to do is not only compare Puka to what we have with Cooper Cup, but I also want to go through and compare him to what we have with all rookie wide receivers since the year 2000. So we're going to pull up the road of his screener. I'm going to look at guys that have had at least seven and a half targets per game. We're going to look at wide receivers that have had about 70-ish receiving yards per game or more, and then look at wide receivers that were about 14 and a half points per game or more, which obviously Puka did clear all these thresholds. And if we're looking at this list in most recent order, we had Puka doing this in 2023. I mean, pretty impressive. Then you had Jamar Chase, 2021. Yes, Jamar Chase, who currently is the wide receiver two in Dynasty Drafts. Justin Jefferson in 2020. Yes, Justin Jefferson, the former number one overall asset in Dynasty. And we can say still the number one wide receiver in Dynasty and number one asset in Dynasty one quarterback leagues. Then we have Michael Thomas in 2016. Keep in mind, Michael Thomas at one point or another was at the very top of fantasy football. We had Odell Beckham Jr., who in his own right, at one point was the dynasty number one wide receiver overall. We have Mike Evans, former Hall of Famer. We have Julio Jones, former Hall of Famer. And we have A.J. Green, former Hall of Famer. Now, I believe we actually cut this off at 2010. It's going to be something I'm doing this offseason. Instead of going all the way back to the year 2000, looking at 2010 and beyond just because we are so far removed from those seasons that happened 25 years ago at this point. But nonetheless, Puka is just listed alongside former league winners as well as Hall of Fame level talents at the wide receiver position. And now what I also want to do is I want to look at what Cooper Cup's season comps to historically if we are looking at other age 30 wide receiver years. This way, we have a good idea on what we should expect from Cooper Cup next season. Because if Cup comes back out and he has, say, 75 receiving yards per game, 80 receiving yards per game, and he does have a massive bounce back this next season, it's going to be hard for Puka to take that next step up to be that legitimate elite wide receiver in fantasy and not just the mid wide receiver one. So we went through and looked at all wide receivers that had a comparable season to Cooper Cup since the year 2000. And you are looking at Brandon Marshall, who was able to have that bounce back season the following year. He went from 13.9 points per game as a 30-year-old to 21.5 points per game at 31 years old. You had Reggie Wayne, who was able to have a bounce back as well from about 14.5 points per game up to 17.5 the following season. And then outside of that, everybody else either stayed neutral or fell off. You had Isaac Bruce, 14 and a half points down to 13 and a half. You had Marquise Colston, 13 and a half points down to 12. You had Pierre Garçon from 12 and a half points down to 11. You had Demarius Thomas from 13 points down to 10 and a half. You had Mike Wallace from 12 and a half down to 10. You had Marvin Jones Jr. going down from 14 to 10. You had Steve Smith going down from about 14 to 8. And you had Willie Jackson going from 13 and a half to no longer being relevant at all. 
So what we have seen is, historically speaking, wide receivers that post a similar season to what Cooper Cup just did, they are going to continue to decline going into their age 31 season, and this should allow Puka to continue to expand his role. Now, yes, Cooper Cup will be a Los Angeles Ram this next season. They can't cut him. I mean, if they were to cut him, they're going to have to pay him anyway. He's $47 million in the dead cap in 2024. The following season at 32 years old in 2025, he has $17 million in the dead cap and they could save about $13 million if they decided to move on from him. So depending on the trajectory for Cooper Cup, we could see 2024 being his last season as a Los Angeles Ram, obviously will depend primarily on what he is able to do this next season. But this next season, unless Matthew Stafford decides that he is done playing football, Stafford will be the quarterback for the Los Angeles Rams. Currently owed $87.5 million in the dead cap. Then in 2025, He's at $37 million in the dead cap. So yeah, in 2025, they want to save $13 million. They can move on from him. But more likely than not, Matthew Stafford to get paid $50 million each season over the next two will be playing. I would be surprised if Stafford retires and surpasses $100 million that he is owed. And then 2026, yes, at the, that time, Stafford probably 38, probably not good. And they can go ahead and they can move on from him and save about 30 million. So nonetheless, we know the situation that Puka's in. He just posted one of the best rookie wide receiver seasons of all time, Hall of Fame level season. He is playing alongside Cooper Cup, who should continue to decline and Puka should see more and more. And Matthew Stafford is locked in to be the quarterback for the foreseeable future. So I want to go over to flockfantasy.com and get a sense of three things. One, where are the community rankings on Puka Nakua? Compare that to the expert rankings and compare that to my own rankings. Now, of course, you want to check out any of these rankings. They're all on flockfantasy.com. The community rankings are going to be free for anybody, so you can pull those up anytime you want. The expert rankings, as well as my own rankings, will be behind a paywall alongside our Dynasty Trade Calculator and so many cool tools. So, of course, if you want to check out anything on flockfantasy.com, you can find that link in the description, and it will be the pinned comment down below. And if you use code FLOCK, you're going to get 30% off any subscription plus yours truly will break down your dynasty fantasy football team when you join but going over and looking at this puka right now is the wide receiver six in the community rankings in super flex leagues he is currently worth less than the 103 and currently worth slightly more than the 104 now that's the market that we have for everybody who uses the site now the expert rankings is going to be a combination of everybody at the fantasy stock exchange dynasty land football i mean dynasty domain and yours truly here we have puka as wide receiver seven garrett wilson is ahead of him but he's still right in between the 103 as well as the 104 I updated my rankings this morning on flogfantasy.com and I have Puka Nakua as the wide receiver five. So that is ahead of both the expert as well as the community rankings. And the reason that I have Puka ahead of both those sets of rankings is I am looking at Puka and I would rather have him over Garrett Wilson going forward. And I love Garrett Wilson. I, I mean, but it's just hard to ignore the fact that Puka as a rookie just had a better season than Wilson's had either year in his NFL career. Now, in terms of where you would compare him to rookie picks, I have him similar to the expert rankings, similar to the community rankings. So it looks like everybody's in line in super flex rookie drafts. Going to have him right behind the 103, right before the 104. The reason for this is you may see Caleb Williams, Drake May go with the first two picks. Maybe Marvin Harrison Jr. goes over Drake May. Nonetheless, there's a chance that you are looking at three elite level assets in super flex leagues with those quarterbacks in this year's rookie draft. So if you're cross-referencing this, obviously you can find one quarterback rankings on the side as well. With my one quarterback rankings, with my one QB rankings, I have Puka directly behind the 101 and directly ahead of the 102. So the reason for this is I'm looking at it saying, okay, well, I would rather have Marvin Harrison Jr. probably still over Puka Nakua. But outside of that, I'd rather have Puka over anybody else in this draft class in a one quarterback league in particular. So we're going to go ahead and take Puka there. 
And I also want to head over to the trade calculator page. Of course, you can play around with our trade calculator, but you can also go through and use it as a trade finder underneath. We're going to put Puka and see some deals that have recently been made with him. You have Josh Downs, Puka Nakua, as well as Jordan Addison being traded for two first round picks. Mark Andrews, Traylon Burks, and Quentin Johnston. So let's just remove Josh Downs, Traylon Burks, Quentin Johnston. I would rather have Jordan Addison over Mark Andrews. I'd probably rather have Puka over too late first. Now, of course, the question is if this is going to be an early round one pick, then at that point, it does get a little bit wishy-washy. Like we said, I in a super flex league, I'm going to be taking the top three picks over Puka, but in a one quarterback format, I'm only taking the 101 ahead of them. And if you look at the trade that was made here, it's a one quarterback format. So if it's like too late first round picks in a one quarterback league, give me Puka relatively easily. Now going over to our next deal, we're going to be looking at a two quarterback format here where you have Justin Fields, Puka, JSN, and a round one pick versus Deshaun Watson, Brandon Ayuk, Justin Jefferson round two. Give me Justin Jefferson relatively easily over Puka Nakua as well as Jackson Smith and Jigma. Brandon Ayuk's worth that 2024 first round pick. Deshaun Watson in a second versus Justin Fields probably give me Watson. So I would prefer the Justin Jefferson side there. Going over to our next deal, we're going to be looking at Amari Cooper, Puka Nakua, TJ Hawkinson, and a round one pick. For Khalil Herbert, Kyle Pitts, Tyree Kill, a round one pick and a round four pick. The fourth round pick obviously doesn't matter at all. If we're breaking this down, I mean, Kyle Pitts versus Amari, I probably prefer Kyle Pitts at this point. Tyree Kill versus Puka, I would rather have Puka. And then so it depends on where these first round picks end up, but I'm probably going to go with the Puka, TJ Hawkinson, and Amari Cooper side. Now, our next deal, we're going to be looking at Puka, Brees Hall, a second and a third versus Chris Olave and two first round picks. So I'm viewing Brees Hall as well as Chris Olave as comparable assets. I'd probably rather have Brees Hall, but this kind of goes back to what we were talking about previously, Puka versus the first rounder. So it's all about your price point on what you want with those rookie picks. And then our next trade, we're looking at Jalen Hurts, Puka Nakua, Devontae Adams versus Brandon Ayuk, Justin Herbert, Hollywood in two seconds. Give me Devontae Adams over the second round picks. Give me Jalen Hurts over Justin Herbert. Would I rather have Puka or Brandon Ayuk and Hollywood Brown? I'm going to take Puka there. So give me the Jalen Hurts and Puka Nakua side. Our next one, Zach Charbonnet, Puka, Chase Brown, and a future first for two first round picks this season and three second round picks as well. So let's just cross out two of these first and going right back to where we're looking at previously. I'd say Chase Brown's worth one of those seconds. Zach Charbonnet's worth the other second. Essentially, you're looking at this trade being Puka for a first and second round pick. And considering the fact that so one quarterback format, unless that's the 101, give me Puka Nakua relatively easily. Our next deal, two quarterback format, Justin Fields, Puka, the second round picks for both 2025 and 2026 versus Saquon Barkley, Russell Wilson, Travis Kelsey, and Tyreek Hill. It's going to be a two quarterback format. So give me Justin Fields over Travis Kelsey, Russell Wilson. The second round picks for sick. Honestly, give me Puka here. Regardless of the way you cut it, I'm confident that I'd be able to sell Justin Fields for a mid first round pick still based off what I've seen with the community rankings. So if I can sell Justin Fields for like the 106, I'd rather have the 106 and Puka Nakua plus a couple future seconds versus all the veterans. Now going over to our, our last trade here, we have Debo Samuel, Puka, Nico Collins, Austin Eckler versus Jaden Reed, JSN, a first and a second round pick here in my mind, it's going to be Puka. No question, especially if you're getting added in Nico Collins, as well as Debo Samuel. But I think that should be it for this video. Hopefully this gives you a good sense of the range of outcomes for Puka, how I'm currently viewing him in dynasty. And if you should be buying, selling or holding, but if you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section. And of course, if you wanted to check out our trade calculator, if you wanted to check out any of our rankings, you can find all that on flogfantasy.com. Doing everything we can to continue to improve the site for you all. So if you ever have anything you want to see, don't hesitate to reach out to me. And if you're not a member already, promo good flock will get you 30% off any subscription, a free week-long trial, and promo good flock will get yours truly to break down your dynasty team in a podcast. But thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. I really do appreciate you and really hope we get to see you out with the video later tomorrow.